thank you. Thanks for inviting me to be here tonight. So uh, my name is Paul Crosby. I'm the president and CEO at the Lindner Center of Hope, uh, located in Mason. And I'm here to talk about a little bit about mental illness and a little bit about what we do here. Um, so mental illness is actually the nation's number one public health problem. It affects about 25% of adults in the U.S. in any given year. Um, it's felt to account for about 80 to 100 billion dollars annually in indirect costs. Um, just take one disease out, for example, such as depression, and that one accounts for 23 billion all by itself. Altogether, mental illness accounts for more um, indirect costs uh, than all other illnesses combined. If you look at the workforce, about 71% of workers with mental illnesses have never sought help from a mental, sorry, from a medical or mental health specialist. Uh, and about 217 million lost work days each year due to productivity decline are felt to be attributable to mental illness. Uh, this is again, more than all other physical illnesses combined. All of those things were true prior to the pandemic. Um, since the pandemic, there's been an e even further increase in mental illness and the need for mental health care. Uh, so since the pandemic, about one in 10 people reported to the CDC that they started or increased substance use because of COVID-19. Uh, reports for anxiety increased by about three times compared with the same period in 2019. About 25% of respondents reported a trauma or stress-related disorder uh, related directly to the pandemic or to some social situation caused by the pandemic, such as job loss or uh, the death of a loved one or, um, or, or other things, uh, relationship stress, those sorts of things. Um, there's been a fourfold increase in depression since the pandemic. And since this is a safety conference, um, in March of 2020, there was about a 40% increase in calls to the National Suicide Helpline. That's about 100,000 per month, um, which is just a staggering rate. Um, and I think many of you may have heard that adolescents and young adults were especially hard hit during the pandemic. Um, and the suicide rate, uh, which was already high in that age group, uh, actually increased over that period of time. So what does the future hold? Um, well, so because of the trauma and the related symptoms caused by the pandemic um, that tend to last for years uh, after the traumatic event uh, has ended, uh, uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation did a study and uh, by their estimation, uh, they felt that the prevalence of mental health symptoms will be elevated above baseline at least until 2030, just as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, this may be a good time to mention when to get professional help. Uh, we look at two things in the field uh, to direct us about whether to seek professional help. Uh, one is distress, which is that the usual ways of coping are overwhelmed, or it's just a feeling of dis-ease, you don't feel well. Um, and then the other is impairment. Uh, symptoms are interfering with living life the way that you're used to or that you'd like to. Um, and this can be any one of uh, several areas, including family, friends, work, school, um, those sorts of things. Um, another way to look at it is that mental illness interferes with the person's ability to be fully themselves. Uh, so a, a more rough, but perhaps even more useful way to look at when to seek help is if you're just not feeling yourself uh, because of possible mental health symptoms or um, if a loved one just doesn't seem like themselves, maybe that's the time to approach them about possibly seeking help. A couple of other things to know. Um, treatment works in general, uh, and in general it is safe and tolerable. Uh, and the goal of treatment is always to feel fully yourself again, whatever that means to you. Uh, I like to mention stigma. Uh, so stigma is negative attitudes towards people with mental illness or towards having a mental illness. Um, I've also heard it said that stigma is just a nice word for discrimination. Um, but be that as it may, mental illness is associated with many negative attitudes. Um, mental health is, uh, for example, the foundation for thinking, communication, learning, resilience, self-esteem. It's the key to our personal well-being, uh, to our relationships, to contributing to community or society. So it's a very personal thing. Uh, and it's also a lot more valuable than many people are consciously aware. 
if the pandemic focused anything or brought anything to the surface, it was how valuable mental health is because I think a lot of people for the first time struggled with mental illness symptoms uh, or saw it in a loved one very close to them. Also, it's not as well understood physiologically compared to many diseases such as heart disease or diabetes. Um, and so we can't give granular answers to a lot of questions about the way uh, mental health happens in the body, although we do know that it is physiologically correlated to certain parts of the brain depending on the illness. But all this together makes it not surprising that many people find it difficult to talk about mental health and mental illness. We fear what we don't know. Um, but stigma is by far the biggest reason why people avoid treatment. Um, and it also happens to be the one that every individual most has the capacity to influence. So if mental illness is the number one mental, or I'm sorry, the number one health problem in the country, and if not receiving the right treatment early enough is the biggest contributor to this problem, then reducing stigma may be the single most important thing that any of us can do as individuals to improve life not only for ourselves and our loved ones, but also for the whole country. So how do we do this? We talk about mental illness on par with any other physical illness. Uh, we just make it normal to talk about. A few words about the Linder Center of Hope. Um, so we opened in 2008 uh, in Mason, Ohio. We're on Old Western Row Road. Um, we are a nonprofit national psychiatric center of excellence. Um, we were established in order to bring the highest quality care to the Cincinnati region, as well as to try to help raise the bar and the standard of mental health care in the country. Uh, we do accept most major insurances. Um, and, and notably, uh, we have recently even started accepting Anthem, um, but we also uh, uh, accept most uh, other carriers. Um, we have what we call a complete campus of care. We have every level of care and we treat all ages um, and these are some of the levels of care that we have. We have inpatient, residential, uh, day treatment. Uh, we have neuromodulation treatments, uh, outpatient, uh, in-person, and, and also virtual um, outpatient treatments. About 60% of our visits outpatient are virtual at this point. We have the, lar the largest medical staff of any freestanding psychiatric facility in the country. We have about 40 medical staff members uh, and growing. And we also have a research institute whose purpose it is to speed discovery to the bedside. Since we opened, we've treated over 50,000 patients, uh, and we've seen patients from all 50 states as well as 10 countries. Um, we, every two years, we have a community education day. This is the year that we will have it, so it will be May 15th, 2022 at the Manor House. Uh, this is an in-person event. Uh, you could go to our website to learn more about that. Um, we also have an ongoing community education series about once a month. Um, we have an educational topic of some sort. And this is done hybrid, it's, it's done in person, but also uh, uh, done video so that it could be uh, seen virtually. Uh, we have a program called Start the Conversation intended to help businesses who are interested in establishing a work culture uh, that's supportive of mental health. Uh, and then in addition to that, our providers provide many, many um, topical presentations throughout the year to businesses, school, professional groups, and community groups upon request. So thank you again for having me here today. Um, here's our phone number and our web address. Um, again, my name is Paul Crosby, and it's been a pleasure to be here. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call. Thank you.